it looks like we're going to be starting off where we finished off. Uh, I guess that wasn't just part one. I guess there's a part two. There's more comments uh, regarding Discovery and a few other things that we're going to go over. Sadly, for most people, this is going to be a video replying to like one person. So it's good for that person, but I don't know who else is really going to be watching this. But uh, here we go. Uh, and this, this first one, I'm just going to get this out of the way now. It's a response to an image, kind of like a tier list I posted of Star Trek Discovery Seasons right after it was over. Just kind of, just my thoughts on it. Um, very, uh, painting it with a broad brush, very in general. Uh, for more details, watch my individual reviews. Uh, Michael Papp, I feel like you're being unfair to Seasons. Hold on here. <clears throat> I feel like you're uh, being a bit unfair of seasons two and four. I feel like each season of Discovery was better than the last. Maybe. I would put one in D, two in C, three in B. Uh, four is B as well. Um, another step in the right direction, but more of a lateral one. S uh, f Discovery season five is S. I wish there was at least one more season. Mm. They were just getting the hang of things. Isn't that the way... Um, you know, when you, uh, just when you think you're lost, you're found, right? And, uh, the nearer your destination, the more you're slip sliding away. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, my feelings are just what they are. Um, uh, I, I appreciated season one a little bit just because it was so different. It felt like I was just watching this gobsmacked at this thing that was so wildly different. I don't know what was going to happen every single episode. Um, you know, if we just disregard the weird non canon -y, you know, kind of stuff. I don't really want to get into it, but um, that's why I kind of like one. Like, I kind of like going back and rewatching it. Um, two, I thought it was worse than one. I just don't like the burn. Not the burn, sorry. I just don't like that Red Angel thing. Just leading me on um, I don't like being led on. If you can't notice. Uh, three. I don't know. I didn't. I don't really love the burn that much. But you like it. That's fine. Um, four is four. The problem with four season four is book. It's just constantly about chasing around book. The idea is good. We're meeting these strange aliens, but it's just this. Every episode is just the same loop of content. But five is the best. What? Do you think five is the best? Do you think it's the best? Uh oh. Okay. What? Is, what do you think that means? Uh. So anyway, thanks a lot, uh, Michael Pap. And we're still going with the Pap attack. Um. Season five, episode four review, Back from the Future. And I mean. We're going on, like, what is it, like a month since Discovery Season 5 ended, and we're still getting comments on it. I need you to hurry up here. <laughs> I can't keep doing this. We're going into Prodigy Season 2. Not that I'm going to be able to watch it. I don't think I can watch it. I followed up on, um, like, what are you scratching at? Stop that. Stop that. Um, I followed up on, uh, like, how exactly to watch it, and it got to the point where I would need to give them my address, and give myself, like, a television bill. Yeah, in in this day and age, I was going to have to... I don't... I can't get the channel that has the, the sci-fi stuff um, without giving them... Uh, without creating a television bill for myself. Because you need to get it through a TV provider. This is the stupidest thing I ever heard. I can't just do it through totally through online. I have to do all this crap. They're just they're using pro. Okay, sorry for the little aside here. I'm going off on a tangent. They're using Prodigy season two to um, as a a bargaining chip or a way to blackmail people into signing back up for ancient linear television services, right? That are terrible now. Um, they need to bolster their numbers. They're saying, okay, these board members are saying we're not making a dime on linear broadcast television. What do we do? We need people to sign up for these packages, like cable and stuff like that. 
well, Prodigy Season 2 is coming out. Let's just lock it behind that. Oh, that'll work. That totally won't just destroy Prodigy. Yeah. the what? This person who reviewed Prodigy Season 1 loves it, is trying to sell people on it, and you're saying I can't have it. Why? Why would you do that? It's not going to help Prodigy to make it harder to watch. Who, th who thinks that makes sense? The original season, I could get that on Crave here. You can't get it here now. Now it's tied to television, like actual television. And I can't get it with the, um, with like the, uh, uh, the basic package. So have fun watching it on Netflix wherever you are. I can't watch it here on Netflix. And I haven't figured it out yet. I don't want to do this. This is crazy. I just want it normal. Put it on a normal streaming services service. One episode a week. Come on. Whatever. Uh, so Michael Papp is back for uh, Face the Strange. That's season five, episode four. Good episode. Isn't there a song about turning and facing the strange? I don't know. Is there? Is there a song about turning and facing the strange? Okay, I'm going to find out right now. Okay, it looks like there is a song about uh, turning and facing the strange by um, one David Bowie, I think. Uh, I haven't heard it. Maybe I'll check it out later. So I guess there really is a song about turning and facing the strange. Uh, face the strange again. That would be cool. Sadly, we didn't get it. Maybe it would be a long trek. Let's see. Yeah, it, it would be cool if there was an episode that was set entirely before Season 3 and showed us, like, stuff about Rainer and all that. And some of these characters we met in the future, showing them, like, before Discovery gets there. That would be so cool. But, uh, maybe it'll be a long trek, which I guess, uh, from the name, I could infer is the opposite of a short trek. So, imagine if we had, like, uh, okay, we're gonna do, uh... <laughs> Instead of a like a fifteen minute episode or something like a short track, something like that, we're gonna do an hour long, just one hour, one episode. <laughs> that it, that's its own thing. Maybe we could do that. Is that possible to do long tracks like that? Like, uh, okay, we're gonna have. Um, it's called Before Discovery, or a uh, uh, Star Trek: The Burn, and uh, it's one hour. And uh, it's just about some random thing that was going on in, in that point, that period of time before season three in Star Trek Discovery, where like the plot is not important. It's all about the setting and the exposition and setting up what things were like at that point. It's just some random plot about some mission. It doesn't matter. It's just about seeing characters doing things and looking at the technology of that era. Star Trek The Burn, Star Trek Burn, something like that. It'd be, maybe that would be cool, man. I... I wish you could see that because I was longing for um, flashbacks and stuff in Star Trek Discovery to show me, you know, what show me the burn, you know, in its infancy, show me the effects of it in that world and show me Rainer, show me early Rainer or early Admiral Vance. Like that could be cool. Um, uh, why should Discovery adapt if the way they operate? Um, is better for them Mr. Starfleet doesn't pride itself on allowing at least some uh, level of individuality on their ship. It's not an organization. It leads us to believe it is. You do you do uh, get results by force people to operate under this. You don't get uh, results by force people to operate under the same methods and styles. Yes, you get them by giving uh, people a structure to work within and allowing them the freedom to have and uh, basic. Yeah, that's a lot of these things are like the captain's prerogative. Um, command styles what have you. And I said that uh, Rainers was born out of the burn. And uh, you're saying, why should Discovery adapt to that? Well, well uh, one thing about this is that there's all there's like the technology of the ship and there's also the social technology of command that I assume also develops the same way technology does. Like, look, we have um, a counselor on the bridge in Star Trek Next Generation. Um, if the Enterprise Constitution class from TOS somehow teleported or time traveled to the Next Generation, maybe they would do that too and they would adapt some styles to fit within the Next Generation. And yes, you need flexibility, but I do think there's also a chance that... Um, 
some uh, some things are just better. Uh, like maybe if we take like a more uh, open ended approach to this, and we'll say like, listen, you're in 31st century, where have you now? And now uh, Starfleet wants to have this new position on the bridge because it got X, Y, and Z results, right? And then it just like the crew dynamic and command style could have changed on Discovery when it came to the future for to make it different and new and fresh, right? But we're not disrupting the crew where it's just it's it's new and there's more stuff we're not taking it away that's one way i i would that i look at this um and and you're saying like why should discovery adapt to rainer or uh instead of rainer adapting to discovery you're yeah you're right like by the end of the episode we get like <clears throat> the changed rainer and then by the end of the season we get Rainer the captain. He takes the captain's chair and looks around, and clearly uh, there is more support than not support. And it's like, this is it. And it was awesome. And we needed that. We needed this, like, derision to, like, make that worth it. So, uh, again, um, these new Star Trek shows, like, the old show is like driving a car, the new show is like being on a train. Right? You can uh, review a trip that you took in a car somewhere and then you came home at the end of the day. But can you review a train trip by each hour you were on it? How do you do that, right? This is what this is the conundrum. What we try to do when we review uh, one episode of what is essentially a portion of a large movie. It, it's, it's, when you get to the end of it, it might change your opinion of the previous episodes. But, um, I mean, certainly, like, Face to Strange, I like it a little bit more now than I did when I reviewed it. Uh, as with a few other episodes like Mirrors. Um, but yeah, um, that was that response was probably way too long. The temporal war sounds insane. I would love a few stories taking place in that era. I would lo- I'm, you know I'm not big on the time travel stuff, but if you made its own contained story about time travel with the temporal war, and it was limited to that, it would be awesome. right? To show how that wrapped up and how we eventually, like, ban time travel, and uh, what the exact, like, rudiments are of enforcing a ban on time travel, that would be cool. (coughs) Speaking of Star Trek and time travel, back when Russell T. Davies was the first, um, I'm not sure what the first charge, what does that mean, of the Doctor Who is this in charge of Doctor Who? Uh, there was some talk about having his Doctor crossover with Archer's Enterprise. <laughs> um, I think I remember that. Now that he's back in charge of Doctor Who and Star Trek is also back on the air. I'm just saying the Temporal War would make a great opportunity and insert a little Time Lord action. Just who was it that mediated the Temporal Accords? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's so that's so insane that it, oh, you would fry people's brains. If it turned out that Doctor Who, like that character, was like important in Star Trek canon. That would be so insane. <laughs> they have crossed over in comics. I remember there was comics, and I have a few. I have a, a few sets of different Star Trek comics. I might have one like this, where uh, Doctor Who crosses over with Star Trek. There's a few of them. Man, I don't know though. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I went back and I was watching um, season one of Discovery and uh, Paul, like, it's easy to forget these things about this show. This show has a lot of um, complicated changes to characters that kind of like get glossed over, like how Paul, like it's never really a factor until I guess Face the Strange that Paul has like that tardigrade DNA or something. I think it's related to that that makes you experience time different, which I can kind of buy. Like, um, is that why he's outside? He he thinks outside of the normal time frame in this. Is that why? Is it because just the f- I've seen all of Discovery and I don't really I'm not really sure. Like that's a that's a, either I'm stupid or that's a problem. But um, yeah, like how uh, 
Uh, Adira has a Trill Symbiont. That's kind of forgotten. Uh, it's never really like important that Zora is a sentient computer. Like that's not. And I, I thought there was kind of like, I thought we had a problem with ship sentience. Wasn't there safeguards on the Intrepid class against ship sentience or something like that? Am I imagining that? But uh, anyway, yeah, there is actual precedent set for him being outside of time. I'm uh, honestly pleased they recalled that bit of internal canon. Canon, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but right at the end of season five, they kind of they wrapped it up. I thought it was satisfying. They referenced a lot of old Discovery stuff. But, um, yeah, it's amazing we could say old now. Uh, uh, the crew in Lower Decks knows a lot about Star Trek. You just know if Mariner or maybe even Boimler were somehow present in such a scenario, they would 100% agree with you. What are we talking about here? Uh, this is when uh, Reno knows, like, are you stuck in a time loop or something? Like, uh, almost like Reno is, like, savvy about Star Trek itself. Like, there's always these characters that... They seem, they seem like they can kind of see over the fourth wall a little bit, and they kind of, like, know the show that they're in. And it's so funny when it's written, like, kind of, like, low-key, like that. Like, if you've been in Starfleet this long, you probably understand that there's instances where people get caught in a time loop. And yet, we can be way... We can be uh, beyond Star Trek Nemesis, and uh, a character will be, like, weirded out by the idea of a time loop. No, you're not going to be weirded out by that stuff here in Starfleet this long. You're also not going to be weirded out by if you've seen this much Star Trek. Like Reno has. Reno knows a lot about Star Trek. And she knows that uh, Stamets might be caught in a time loop. And this, I know I said this episode would have been way even better if Reno was helping out um, our characters without Reno herself knowing about what was going on really only knowing that weird things happen in star trek <laughs> and now you're saying it sounds like a lower decks thing and it absolutely does mariner or bormler would actually 100 percent know like if uh somebody came back and saying asking about time timey wimey stuff uh mariner and bormler would be like oh you're stuck in a time loop got it <laughs> The plot of this episode recalls uh, to mind a Voyager episode where parts of the ship are stuck in different times. We play around with that a lot. Um, Prodigy kind of has it too. Um, that was a, that was a really good episode of Prodigy. Uh, uh, such a great piece of fiction. Uh, love the short treks. Yeah, uh, we're referencing uh, the episode Calypso episode of the short trek calypso uh everyone was wondering how is this going to tie back into calypso it eventually does it's not an extremely fun way it ties back into it, it feels kind of you know just obvious and just kind of sad in a way if you've seen the last episode but uh yeah uh short treks there's good ones there's bad ones it's it's just kind of you know finger food uh I know bombs exist. I don't know much about traps they might have. Even if I'm a trained officer, but not a bomb specialist, I might I might not be more knowledgeable about the intricacies of bomb diffusion than I am now. I could maybe take out a normal bomb, but anything crazy, and I need help. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was the first instinct when I watched Face the Strange, and there was that little time bug thing. My first instinct, I think Rainer tries to grab it first, and I was shocked that somebody tried to grab it. I would never touch anything like that that i wasn't sure what it was like if there's something like say this little thing here this little bug i happen to have on my desk see he's not really he doesn't bite look he's he's totally he's very polite um if this was on something and it was just frozen there and i was on a spaceship and i was in star trek i'd be so scared to touch it um but uh yeah um one must always um be afraid of uh, bombs and they they certainly shouldn't um, learn to love the bomb either. Uh, yeah, again, I often review these episodes and I come up with ideas that I think are just cooler than what they had. But then I know that a cool idea requires money and time. <laughs> and I'm not a writer. And I know this is hard. 
but it would have been so cool if there was a piece of this puzzle in uh in a uh, with regards to the progenitor tech that was hidden in the past and you had to go back in time to get it and in this episode they do see like uh they do see san francisco i believe and it would have been so cool if it was in san francisco in 22 uh 50 when was the discovery constructed the 2240s so i don't know exactly it's, it's older than the constitution class right um yeah that would have been so cool because the ship was under construction in, in uh, Face of Strange when they went back in time to that part. <sighs> I know how expensive it would have been to leave the ship and walk around, but man. Uh, it's unfair to say this is the last season. They needed to do more of this or less of that. What they needed was to know... That, yes, what they needed to know was the season they were making was the last, which they did not get. So all these character moments weren't meant to be the last season. Season 5 is the equivalent of TNG Season 3. Uh, inside uh, episode production wise this was when the production crew found the show's voice sadly this crew was shut down just as they were beginning to do the same the same could be said of Enterprise um, yeah it's. I can say this is the last season they needed to do blah 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 um, I, I knew going into it that they didn't know until a certain point and I knew that there was reshoots I knew that they, they went back and changed the things but um, they also, they also tell you I mean, you've heard this before, right? Uh, live each day like it's your last. Uh, I mean, maybe make each season like it's your last. It's... Man, I just... Like, if I was working on this show, and I, I even got a, bare, a hint of a thought in my mind that it could be canceled, we... Man, we... <laughs> Everybody better have something to do in every single season because this could be it. And there was a time where Star Trek was made like that. Like, after uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture, they didn't think they were coming back. And then they ended up coming back, and they thought that was it. And then they came back again. And then they came back again. That's why every single, uh, like, Star Trek movie, uh, up to a certain point, felt like it was a culmination of everything. A culmination, and then, oh, we need to do another one? Okay. And then, that has its problems, too. But... You know what I'm saying, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> season one, Burnham and Reese believing the new guy from a species they never heard of before, wearing an unfamiliar uniform is exactly what you're wanting from Reno, only without the comedy. It's a more dramatic version. Reno can do it. <laughs> You can give something stupid and give it to Reno, and Reno will make it work. It's, uh, that's, Reno is a bit, uh, there's no other, I don't know why I love Reno, but there's, like, no other character in Star Trek like Reno. I can't understand it. It's hard to even pinpoint what it is. Um, I mean, my second favorite moment, I think, from Discovery was Reno. On the bridge that time, in Discovery, like, at the end of Season 4. I think, I, I think that was my number two moment. <laughs> and my number one moment was from the second last episode. Uh, that was one of the few times I got up out of my seat when I was watching Discovery. I was sitting here in this chair watching it, and uh, the Discovery went into the dream breadnought. Breadnought. Dreadnought, I mean, not breadnought. <laughs> the Discovery went into the brain dreadnought. And uh, I, I had to pop off like that. Like, I kind of, like, left my seat a little bit. <laughs> uh, uh, say we're uh, Michael Papp for the episode Mirrors. We're finally on to Mirrors now. You're going to finish it. You're going to finish commenting on Discovery Season 5 any day now. Uh, that makes perfect sense, actually. Yes, do push it back in. This is a comment about the 3D skit at the beginning of this episode. And I like getting comments about those because they're not super easy to do. You have to... I have to crank these out after I watch the episode and do the review and get it done. And it's it's not easy to just crank them out that fast. You're not supposed to be doing 3D animations like that. Like, it, that's why they look so bad. <laughs> I keep trying. I keep. I, I use as many pre-made assets as I can. Pre-made is in I already made them before, so that I can make them look as good as I can. But sometimes you got to generate stuff on the fly, fast, and you build up a skill set. But they still do look ugly. So I'm happy when people mention them. 
and this you have to make a different one for every review. Now I I have this problem where I I uh, increase the production value of something and I can't go back. I can't go backwards, and I'm just one person. <laughs> uh, that makes sense. Yes, I actually push it back in. This is where we discover the ISS Dingwall, and we're pulling it out of the uh, like the temporal rift or something like that, whatever. Uh, that kind of a portal between the mirror universe and our universe, and we're pulling out the ship, and then we realize it's the ISS Dingwall, and then we like switch the tractor beam to a repulsor, and we're trying to push it back, push it back. <laughs> Uh, and then again for mirrors, Michael Papp, exactly right. They just figured out how to make good discovery episodes. The show grew its proverbial Riker beard. I remember saying something when I was reviewing season five, where I said, "Imagine if this was season one." I was like, "Man," and mirrors, um, I like, I like mirrors. I, I, I don't look at reviews that other people do before I review an episode. But sometimes I check to see what people are saying, like, after I did my review. And people didn't really like mirrors, but I like mirrors. I like it more now. Um, <clears throat> it was just, I don't know, it was hitting for me. Uh, yeah, you're agreeing, or disagreeing, I should say, with, like, kind of my... I was I was a little bit glib talking about uh, just canceling Discovery, but um, also, I think, um, not to go on another tangent... We're entering a realm of, or we've already, since a few years now, entered the realm of, like, streaming television. It's it's just, it's different. I think in streaming, I know I mentioned this before, streaming shows go like this. In, like, viewership or something like that. And uh, you're only, you're not paying for each individual episode. You're subscribing and then watching as much as you want. So I think what that means is in order for a company to get more money, they need new shows, right? When a show is already on, it's not generating new subscribers. When it's like plateaued, when it's starting, that's when we're getting people subscribing. I think with streaming shows, we're actually going to get more shows and fewer seasons per show. And I think... You're either going to have, it was, it used to be few shows, many seasons. Now we're getting many shows, few seasons. Because it's better for these companies that run these streaming services and whatnot, and um, say Paramount, to get new subscribers than it is to service the subscribers they have now. And these companies don't just need money. They need more money than they had before to compete with the other companies. Right, you have to, you know, it's like a treadmill. So, discovery ending now was probably inevitable, given that it was a streaming show and it was like the first of like the new Trek kind of stuff. I know, you know, give or take. Um, so yeah, it was happening. It was going to happen. We probably should have got another season or two. We should have got another season where they knew it would be the final season. Um, it would have been even cooler if they knew season five was going to be the final season because season five is about the progenitor tech. And that feels like a very, uh, it feels like there's like a sense of finality to that idea. Uh, canceling Discovery now feels like cutting a line just when it was finding its balance. I would have been happy with at least two more seasons. We got Academy. It, it could just feel like a continuation of it. We don't know yet. Um, uh, Burnham is still from the TOS era. Would Captain Kirk stay behind? It's no shocker. Style of command is a product of her upbringing and, and initial training. Despite clear writing issues in the earlier seasons, everyone understood Kirk's mentality of it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. <laughs> Burnham clearly lived by that mentality. She is for sure a TOS captain in the riskiest fashion, however imperfectly written. Uh... Is, is she a TOS captain or is she a TOS um, human raised on Vulcan uh, like commander or something like that, right? It's a little bit, I'm just I'm splitting hairs here, but um, there was a point in Discovery 
earlier on where uh burnham uh being uh like a pseudo vulcan like uh, like mentally having been raised on vulcan and whatever that entails was like important do you remember when that was important and then it kind of stopped it stopped like somehow immediately i think right when they refound burnham in season three remember that and it's like, oh, I've been gone for a year or something like that. I think that's the last time Vulcan ever mattered, really, to uh, Burnham. Outside of the superficial stuff with Navarre, it was very surface level. Um, I'm not complaining. I didn't really, I didn't, I barely even noticed that it was gone. But I'm just saying that it's like, she's not like Kirk. She's actually like a TOS character that's like, kind of like, say, like uh, a Vulcan um, not exactly like Spock, just kind of like a different Spock. It's it's not exactly the same as like a Kirk, but you, I mean you're generally right though. I'm just like I said, I'm splitting hair, so don't worry about it. Uh, mirrors again. Pretty sure it went kablooey. Don't remember exactly why. Something about the mumble mumble D- <laughs> DMA. Something something wordy. Something, something cascade reaction. Blah, blah, blah. You forgot something. You forgot the um. Uh, deflector pulse thing that had to happen. Uh, something about the DMA, something polar- polarity of the neutron flow reversing cascade reaction, blah, blah, warp core, cancel out the blah, 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 uh, the, uh, deflector pulse, blah, 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 uh, tachyons, blah, blah. <laughs> you, gotta, you can stick a few more in there. Uh, that ship was so cool, it didn't deserve to uh, go out like that. However, it, it did actually go out. My only consolation is because this is the future, there's an entire possibility is merely one of the fleet of similar models that could show up in a future project. So I guess you're talking about book ship, and yeah, I was sad it was gone, but I couldn't remember why. So you seem to know it was gone. I'm going to trust you that <laughs> it was destroyed. Where Was it destroyed in the... In the... Uh... Yeah, it was destroyed in the DNA. They went... The episode Rubicon, they saw that thingy. They needed to go into the hypersphere to get the power for the transporter so that Ruan Tarka could go to wherever. And that was the last we seen a book ship, I think. Yeah. Uh, what if the programmable matter allows the for ship to change size based on mission parameters? Oh my word. Oh my goodness. We're talking about changing the size of a ship on the fly. I don't know. I mean, uh, the te- re- in reality, if technology had advanced linearly, which it did not because of the burn and all that, um, if it did, actually what, what would be going on in the 31st century would be way crazier than what we see. So you kind of bringing up all these insane ideas isn't that crazy. Um like, we were already talking about, um, like, bio-neural gel packs and stuff like that. We were already talking about the prospect of ships um, being grown, partially, uh, in, like, side canon and, like, uh, interviews with ship designers. Like, I think Doug Drexler has brought this up before, talking about the Enterprise-J and stuff like that. Like, ships being uh, grown, Ships being sprayed together with nanites, uh, ships building themselves, ships healing their surfaces automatically. Um, it's been crazier things have been thought of than what we've really even seen in uh, the 31st century. But these ideas are expensive. Yeah, you're saying uh, you noticed when, like, the mission to, like, defeat... Um, uh, Lack and Maul. I almost couldn't remember their names. When uh, the mission to defeat Lock and Maul immediately switched to a rescue mission without anybody thinking about it. That was pretty cool. But you noticed it. But it was pretty cool how that worked. Um, uh, yeah, maybe it could have been the OG Defiant finally coming home. Ugh, just the idea gave me some chills. I am so annoyed they went with the Enterprise. Feels lazy. We got a set here. It's the Enterprise. We'll just make it that evil Enterprise from to show day is all love. <coughs> a lost in time Federation ship being returned, found by another ship with similar history. That's some heavy symmetry worthy of George Lucas. I brought this up in Prodigy. 
the same. Remember when uh, all the world's a stage? I love the episode. And then I complain, though, that it just happened. The ship, the shuttle that they found in that planet with the Enterpriseians and whatever, um, just happened to be a shuttle from the Enterprise. I complained about it. I did say something about that. I don't like making things smaller. Like, it's not everything is about the Enterprise. I mean, I know that we don't got a lot of money and we have to kind of reuse things, but, you know, maybe it could have been the Defiant. I mean, we already saw... Did we not see a diagram of the Defiant on the Discovery Bridge when we went to the Mirror Universe or something like that? Did we not see that? Who was at the... Who was at the... uh the console was it ash tyler and they were looking at a little diagram a little wireframe model and it was like it was like it was the defiant or something did that happen it could have been the defiant um just change its name on the top just go in there and change the texture around so it says uss defiant iss defiant whatever um a lost in time federation ship being returned and found by another ship with a similar history that's some heavy symmetry worthy of George Lucas himself. Defiant being a Constitution class means the structure could remain similar. Or it could be a different class altogether. Like, what was that other ship? Peregrine or something? Uh, Sombra class. Remember that time in Strange New Worlds Season 1? There was a, a, a clearly a Constitution class ship that they just tried to pull the wool over my eyes and say it wasn't a Constitution class. Remember that? Uh, just add some cosmetic changes to make the set even more different. Call it the Defiant. We've uh, we've hand away canon cop complaints as the Empire modified it down. Yeah. Bob's your uncle. More satisfying setting than merely the ISS Enterprise for no reason. Yeah. I complain about these things. I get in trouble. Um, in my comment section. <laughs> uh, uh, what's this here? That, that's a cool idea. The ISS Enterprise G just redressed the sets. Yeah, I thought if we're if we're having a ship out of time, and it's an Empire ship from the Mirror Universe, like just make it like take make it something from Picard. Take a ship from Picard. That would have been really cool. Uh, I thought it was like a message from Mira Spock, or at least info telling her even in an evil universe her brother was logical enough. Yeah. Um, the locket, I don't think it exactly came across that well what the what the intention was. Like, it's, I don't know, it's just kind of one of those nonverbal things. Uh... Uh, man, that is such a cool insight. A battle between two sets of lovers. <laughs> One fight to stay together, the other forcing themselves apart. Oh, that is some tasty thematic goodness. Yes, I notice these things. You see, I can see beyond the text. I see a thing that's you may have heard of it. I don't know, but it's called subtext. And there's things that sometimes accidentally come out, and, the, and even the writers don't even realize it. But yes, this is lovers versus lovers. Not two people in love fighting, two sets of lovers fighting each other. Such a cool insight. A battle between us two sets of lovers, yes. Um, sadly, uh, Locke, spoilers, would essentially die from his injuries. Um, the Cisco's love their dads a lot. Data, too, in his way. Um, O'Brien's a dad and his kids still love him. That counts, right? Otherwise, I'm struggling pretty hard to come up with good parent relationships. Uh, wait, what about Worf? Uh, he would do terrible things. Yeah, the Rojenkos. Worf himself seems to not have learned how to be a dad, but that's not Serge's fault. Or Sergey. Uh, we have that name here locally, and we pronounce it Serge. Uh, I don't know why exactly. I think Worf's rigid mentality drove the wedge between he and Alexander. Dude just uh, launched a little man back to Earth ten minutes after finding his dead mom and father said, Said dead mom clearly wanted her two uh, loves uh, living together. Man, Worf was a crap to aw. He just didn't know how to not how uh, not to be. Guy was terrible at, uh, at, his, at the job, even though his uh, love for kids was real. Yeah, uh, there's many instances of this. Uh, writers have a hard time with parents in general. I don't know what it is. They just keep happening. And it's not a new thing. It's old. Um, we keep having problems with our characters 
not getting along with their parents over and over and over. It's, you know, it's kind of like maybe the writers didn't like their parents. Imagine that. Uh, uh, nah, man, she was clever. Slow, so confusion and uncertainty in your enemies. Cast like them into thinking they're failing even uh, if they're actually winning. What exactly does this mean? So confusion and uncertainty in your enemies. Cast like them into thinking they're failing even if they're actually winning. Yeah, with the lock and I'll destroy this thing and it's important and it's the clue and blah, blah, blah. Let's talk it out even though I have the upper hand. I don't know. Uh, uh, the new designs feel like the result of a millennia's advancement. Um, I, I've generally been positive on the Breen's uh, new costumes. Um, I, I remember, I think I just said that it, uh, it could be a little bit more out there. I don't know, it looks a little bit more reserved than I would expect. Uh, a little, it should be a little bit more wild and crazy. Um, <clears throat> just, you know, just go for it. Just swing for the fences on this stuff. Um, but generally, I've been positive on their outfits. Uh, I feel like they're semi-gelatinous at times. It's a nifty new race trait. Can't remember any other beings like them. Yeah, it's interesting. I just don't like that they're green. I brought this up before. Like, we... Uh, we already had the Orions. I know as soon as I saw Locke without his helmet off, I just said, this guy just looks like Crawl from beyond. It's just not that unique. Like, make them, like, uh, red or gold or something. I don't know, just something. Green, and I brought this up a number of times in the season in different ways. Green is an overused bad guy color in Star Trek. I don't understand why, but it's just how it is. But yeah, they're semi-gelatinous at times. Um, I wish we knew more about that. Having seen the whole season, I wish we got a little more. Like, I remember wanting more Breen, a little bit more in the history. The specifics of the biology, I didn't really get enough of. Uh, they changed from gelatinous to solid, and they want people to see one face and not the other. One is weak and one is strong, uh, in a sense. Uh Locke says, why can we change? And that doesn't, it doesn't complete itself. It doesn't, that, the arc of Locke figuring out, like, in his mind, the thematic purpose of being able to change in the greater sense of things between gelatinous and solid, he says, but why can we change? Do you remember that? It's, it, it, that doesn't really pay off. We don't really understand that by the end, what that means. And that was really, I didn't really like that. Uh, the, the show did a good job. I agree with this. The show did a good job of establishing the two as lovers. Many people did not think that. Like I said, I watched other people's, some other reviews and saw what people were saying about this episode. They didn't like it as much as I did. Uh, the show did a good job of establishing the two as lovers. It feels like a real relationship. Uh, I'd buy it completely. Too, uh, too smart enough to be dangerous kids ran off together and got too cocky. Thought they knew more than medical doctors. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, again, I liked it, but a lot of people didn't. I'm not sure why. Uh, like I said, too cocky. It wasn't supposed to happen because he's supposed to be able to get out of everything, like the skin of his teeth. They're not supposed to actually get hurt, and then they actually do. It's interesting, eh? They got away with it for so long, and then one moment they couldn't beat Book and Michael. And that was it. And he looks at himself. It wasn't supposed to end like this or something like that. Like, Locke has some satisfying remark when he looks at himself and he realizes he's dying. Like, he was in a movie all this time, and then, oh my god, wait a minute, it wasn't a movie. Like, that kind of idea, right? Uh, you've said things got very Star Trek at least two times this review. Thanks, I repeat myself. That's a sign of stupidity. <laughs> uh, uh, let's just chuck that up to book being experienced without Star Trek is supposed to work. After all, he hasn't been through any Starfleet training, as far as we know. I really thought Book was going to end up in Starfleet by, like, the end of Season 4. I really thought, but it went in a very different direction. Not necessarily bad, just different. Um, yeah, he, does, he doesn't really know how a lot of stuff's supposed to work. Uh, he doesn't know how to Star Trek that hard, like we do. I, mean, I assume we could Star Trek like you wouldn't believe uh, and make a very boring and... Uh, 
self-referential, sad fanfic episode that feels like it was made by people who were only watching Star Trek and nothing else. Uh, like I do, because I'm crazy. Uh, pretty sure they could only film a few scenes for the finale. All the plot threads are meant to be season-long arcs, not a culmination of their stories. Yeah, having, like, I don't, I try not to look behind the scenes stuff until it's over. But yeah, they basically filmed a final scene to tack on to the end of the last episode. I don't think they, they may have, but I don't think they went back and filmed anything to insert in the season itself. As for Tilly and Culber uh, talked, as for why Tilly and Culber talked, Tilly saw her friend looking stressed, asked him about it. He felt like she was worth speaking with and agreed to the chat. Has not really been my experience. And more akin to you with your emotional cue cluelessness. I'm also quite reticent to discuss much with others. <laughs> yeah, people ask me if people look at me and they say, is something wrong? And I say, no. Oh, <laughs> like, ten times a day. Uh, I care still, just couldn't get to watching it until now. I agree with this season with season one. It would, yeah, if this was season one, this would be this would be freaking batting a thousand if this was season one. But we can't all be TOS. Go back and watch TOS and marvel at the fact that it was hitting on all cylinders from episode one. How did they do it? Go watch season one of TOS and just like think, wow, oh my god. We, somehow we've established every single thing we need to know about everybody in two minutes. It's perfect. I don't know how they did it. Just look at the writing in TOS Season 1. Specifically, right at the beginning, like just how easily it gets across everything it needs to. Um, it's like the only, really, barring a few exceptions here and there, the only like Star Trek show that is like, it hits 100% right out of the gate from the first episode. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, I guess they at that time they just had something to prove. Um, I still care. I care still. Just couldn't get to watching it until now. For a while, I was reviewing these episodes, like I said, into the ether. No one was responding. It was dead. As I said before, my channel relies on, like, Star Trek. Not good Star Trek or bad Star Trek. It relies on Star Trek that people care about. It relies on something people care about. Like, that's not me or you. It's everybody. we got to, like, see outside of our own mind. And the fact of the matter is, <clears throat> for my channel, people didn't really care about anything that wasn't Picard or, like, Strange New Worlds. They just didn't really want to see it. Um, Humdinger is a perfectly peachy keen comment. Yeah, it's also perfectly cromulent. Uh, the uh, the two had to be written off for scheduling reasons. It's a shame. You're not wrong. Poor Reese. It was right there. Yeah. Uh, Awashikin and uh, Detmer just disappear. And Reese, this episode he was talking about, Reese was talking about how much he loved the Constitution class. He doesn't get to go with them. And Detmer and, and uh, Awashikin fly the ISS Enterprise away into another show or something. <laughs> they're gone. I don't know if they're... Maybe they'll be back in Academy. I don't know, but it just seems like we kind of lose characters before the season even ends. It's kind of weird. Here's the last season, and we got characters leaving in the middle of it. <laughs> even though it was the scheduling stuff. Kind of weird, eh? <laughs> it would be very Boimler of him. I believe you're referring to Reese getting to play captain of the ISS Enterprise Constitution class. There you go, buddy. You can be the captain. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That'd be so cool. That's Reese doesn't get to do that. Uh, you just you give him something and then you just take it right away. Right? You just dangle something over their head and then yoink. Not today, Reese. <laughs> God, imagine how fun it would be to find old ships and then you're just you're not that high up you're like lieutenant commander or something and you've been toiling away cleaning these injectors making sure they're all clean down in the warp core and then they say hey bud 
why don't you come up to the bridge for a moment, big guy? I've got a surprise for you. And you go up and they find, like, uh, they find uh, this old earth glass that's been frozen somewhere forever and they just freed it up. We need somebody to captain this ship back to Starbase. You want to do it? Okay, yeah, I'll do it. And you get to go and sit in the captain's chair and nothing can go wrong. And you just get to uh, uh, set a course for a Starbase whatever. Uh, warp Factor 2. So we take nice and long to get there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, to finish off, we're uh, checking out some comments with regards to uh, things that came after on uh, Star Trek Discovery Season 5 on this channel. Like Discovery's Best Moments and Original Top 10. Wow, you managed to get as many as 10 Best Moments. Well done. From Heathen, Heathen Geek. Uh, yeah, I did manage to get 10 moments. Um, <clears throat> there there was a lot of bad, but uh, I think these 10 moments are pretty good. And I was trying to be honest, and I'm glad that you noticed. Um, Floyd Looney, the USS Smoke Detector. I just come up with weird experimental ships and I post them. I learned to stop worrying about it. USS Showerhead, my first thought. What do you think that ship is supposed to be? By the way, what do you think I was making when I made that ship? It's far from done. I just learned to stop worrying and love the incomplete ship and posting it anyway, just for fun. Uh, and from S Smitty Met, great work here. Kudos for not joining the haterverse on this uh, series. It looks it took big swings and a lot of stuff. Some were hits, like the scale of the 10C and control, and some I disagree with. The cause of the burn. All in all, I'll rewatch for sure. Glad they're staying in this part of the uh, Star Trek or Trek with Starfleet Academy. This list was great in that it wasn't a lot of obvious highlights, but great character moments. Well done. That's my goal with top 10 videos. I don't want to do the same one everybody has. Have you ever noticed that maybe when people do top 10 videos, they just go on uh, Google or whatever and look up top 10 moments, and then they just copy it, and it's the same stuff forever? That's why I didn't look anything up. I sat here in this chair and I just said to myself, what do I remember? What was important to me? What was important to me? Not everybody else, not the internet. And I just tried to like remember on my own and that's how I came up with this and that's why it's an original top 10. Uh, finally from Power Cage on how many times can we repeat the same shape? More experimental ships I just plop onto the community uh, post page. It's still prettier than the Cybertruck. Well, you know what they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And that's it for Discovery Season 5 comments. Or is it? Is Michael Papp going to be back? Is he going to finish his thoughts in the last few episodes? I don't know. I'm Lieutenant Mark, signing off.